Welcome back to Crash and Eddie. I'm Eddie. Crash has brought a special treat for us today in BitListen. Yes, welcome everybody. This is uh, Crash. Um, I wanted to have Eddie cue this up. This is a really good way to uh, teach people how the blockchain works uh, visually as well as audio wise. Um, it's something I, I, once in a while, I turn this on and I'll just have it playing in the background. And it gives me a sense of how many transactions are being uh, incorporated on the uh, Bitcoin blockchain at any one time. Now, if you're watching the screen, you're going to see these two big blocks that are popping up. All the bubbles are individual transactions. And the big blocks here, it looks like they had two blocks that just got... Um, oh, wow. I've never uh, seen the blocks. Huh. <clears throat> yeah, they just got uh, well certified or whatever and added to the blockchain. Um, okay, so that's the, a block being produced. Nine thirty three, nine thirty four. Okay. Yep. So uh, twelve hundred and forty seven was one of them. So if we take uh, twelve forty seven times, <clears throat> what's it at? About uh, thirty seven thousand right now. Yep, thirty seven thousand dollars. <clears throat> that was a 40 46 million dollar block okay and that's a small one i saw one earlier go through i saw one transaction one bubble that filled the whole screen and it was 400 and i wrote it down 458 million dollar transaction one transaction of bitcoin that's half a bill of, half a bill <laughs> Nice. <clears throat> in one transaction now it, it, the thing it, it doesn't tell you if it's a buy or a sell it just says that it's a trans you know it just shows as a transaction um and maybe there's maybe there is a way of telling that but i kind of looked around and i couldn't tell um <clears throat> so each one of these little bubbles and you have the music cued down but you can hear that dinging noise the bigger the um <clears throat> Oh, it's different. Now, the higher pitch, the higher pitch are the small bubbles, and as the as the uh, bubbles get bigger and higher dollar amounts, they get a lower tone. And once in a while, you'll just hear this really low gong that uh, uh, is a huge transaction. So, um, yeah. So go to go to BitListen. This is a good way to teach people how to um, how the blockchain works and gives them a, a little bit of a visual of how many transactions and <clears throat> how alive this ecosystem is so um and then on the uh, bottom right uh you'll see there's a couple buttons you can click one of them is uh show units in dollars why don't you click on that eddie sorry we had a little technical difficulty I had to take care of what was that click on a dollar uh yeah the bottom right there's a, a box yeah. yeah show units in u.s dollars oh got it okay Okay, and that'll start switching the bubbles over to okay. instead of showing a Bitcoin amount, it shows the actual U.S. dollar amount. Okay, that's <clears> cool. So now there's that one big bubble there to the right. I can't tell exactly what it is, but it's got when looks it like, moves around. There's a bunch of other numbers in front of it. Looks like uh, four hundred, no, four million something or forty. Yeah, well, that that one small bubble is four million dollar. Uh, transaction on on the blockchain for Bitcoin. I think it might have been forty three million. <laughs> yeah, they probably. <clears throat> There's been some huge numbers coming across here. It's kind of quiet right now. A little bit earlier, you could hardly see the screen. There were so many transactions going on. Fascinating. <clears throat> well, it's probably you know Asia's going to sleep now. Yeah. At night, it's probably pretty active, right? Because we're, mm -hmm. I mean. Listeners got to realize we're the small fish in this. The U.S. is not the big fish in crypto. No. You know? Europe is really right. big, too. I mean, it would, actually, yeah, I would go Asia, Europe, and then North America. Yeah, <laughs> right. We're, we're uh, and boy, our, we don't like that. We don't like being the little <laughs> fish, but it's no, kind of refreshing, that's actually. Be, yeah, it sounds like, you know, that's why Kashkari has the view he does. Oh, you had to bring up your boy Neil, huh? <laughs> All right, we're going to go there. All right, we'll go there.
Hold on a second. <laughs> he's, a, he's a badass. I wouldn't go face to face with him. He'd probably All right. Up. So we got Kashkari and a, a killer quote that Crash found. Mm hmm. Uh, let's read this here. You, do you have it in front of you, Crash? You going with this? You want me to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Um, yeah, Kashkari, Neil Kashkari, he's the um, Fed president for the Minneapolis branch of the Federal Reserve and is uh, he's known for his fierce criticism of Bitcoin. Um, a year ago when he w when uh, asked whether he would prefer a, a one-year-old, his one-year-old daughter to have a Bitcoin or a low-yield treasury bond, he stated, the Bitcoin cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency is basically like a giant garbage dumpster. <laughs> we, <laughs> the reason the dollar has value is because the U.S. government has a legal monopoly on producing the dollar. It's not the U.S. government. It's the Federal Reserve that has the legal monopoly. All right. Um, maybe five years from now or 10 years or 20 years from now, something will emerge uh, from this and... and so far as all the emerging is burning garbage right now. He's just, yeah, he's just bashing it. <clears throat> Which, now, when you is know, this from? It, How uh, recent when is When you this? got. Do, do you know a time frame? Like, is this sometime recent? This feels like it might have uh, been a couple of years ago. Completely decimate their. What's that? Monopoly. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a year ago. Or, yeah, uh, something yeah, like that. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> That is interesting. Yeah. Our boy Neil, yeah, he's he's uh, the <laughs> Minneapolis Fed president, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and he's on CNBC quite a bit. He is all about printing. You know, yeah. when in doubt, keep on printing. You can't print fast enough. You can't print hard enough. Just keep printing. I like. I just like how they use these terms, and they they they. Uh... They de defer their responsibility by saying the value is because the U.S. government has legal monopoly on producing the dollar, like it's Congress has anything to do with it. Um, yeah, right. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Um, what else do we got here? Okay, so um, so we got. The latest in the markets now. You're feeling it with Bitcoin right now, huh? Thirty-seven one ninety-two. Yeah, well, Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mean, if you look at the charts, uh, you know, Bitcoin was in a consolidating triangle for, I don't know, several weeks, and uh, they've just busted out of that in the last two days, and broken up to uh, yeah, they're thirty over thirty-seven thousand dollars right now. Did you and, see Ethereum uh, above sixteen yet? It's yeah, pushing. I'm looking at it right now. Yep. Yep. I mean, what? It's all time high. <laughs> Yesterday was uh, 1450 or something, 1470. Yeah, it just hit 16. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's uh, it, it, the, the run is on. Um, wow. When you got XRP hitting 39 centavos, you know something's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> Yeah, you have to bring up XRP. Let's let's, let's have some more fun with Ethereum. Um, right. You know, the way I look at Ethereum, okay, it just broke over its uh, uh, and closed several uh, two days over or one day uh, over the uh, all time high. Um, it's 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 a free run at this point. I mean, um, so no this one, why, uh, yeah. I mean, I expect in the next month it to you know go well over probably probably close to 3000 before it maybe consolidates again. All right. Now put the brakes on crash. Hold on a second here. <laughs> now, you know what's going on next week, right? Ethereum goes, the CME is coming out with Ethereum futures. Uh huh. Remarkable timing. Don't you think? Oh, that's right. So, Let's not get to, oh. I mean, I think. Oh, so no. that's, yeah, that's just a license to steal. That's like, oh, that's that uh, one analogy. Remember? Um, yeah, I can't sell a house that I don't own. Yeah. And I can't, I can't sell a car I don't own. 
Yeah. But on the, on the, the futures market, I can sell stocks and, and cryptocurrencies that I don't own. Isn't that ironic? Yep. So that's interesting, though, because now Bitcoin, it hit Bitcoin. We all remember it, they put brought futures out and they said they were doing it to harness the beast. And they did it for a while. So, you know, it, it could affect Ethereum. It could have no effect on Ethereum, too. I mean, it's boy, the timing is is interesting. And you look at these markets and they're kind of they're really constricting now you know things are moving faster i mean at this because you got to look at how the whole global financial system and everything that's going on in the great reset with everything all this stuff so you know do you really see ethereum okay they're going to bring futures out and it's going to go down to 800 and sit there for two years Mm -hmm. really i don't know about that so maybe it'll have no effect but it's that is coming next week, so we'll see. I mean, I would be surprised if it ran too much before that, but maybe. Well, they've been, um, the, the Bitcoin's been on the futures market, right? Yeah, they've been, and when it when they first did it, that thing tanked, you know, and yeah. then the whole market tanked because of Bitcoin, so. Oh, that was, yeah, that was the last bull run in 17, right? Yep, they brought it out right around 20,000, and it tanked, so. Yeah. But, I mean, that doesn't mean that's going to happen with Ethereum, but it's a factor. It's going to be some kind of factor. It might hold it back until it comes out. It might have some volatility after. I don't know. It's going to be, that is a, it's a. They're fighting fire. Uh, they're, they're playing with fire if they're going to be trying to manipulate things because everybody's kind of woke or awakened to um all this swamp stuff whether it's in politics or in in finance or in medical industry or whatever and you know you got all these executives right now learning about bitcoin and how to uh, put their corporate treasuries uh a portion of that into into bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies and they better be real careful if they try to crash this market yeah, and Ethereum is a beast. As you're doing, as you're speaking, I'm loading um, all the markets that it's on. You know, when when on Coin Market Cap it says load more, there's a lot of markets. I'm already up to 300 markets that Ethereum's on, so it's it's mm-hmm. a beast. They're they're taming. You know, look at 400 still loading. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's it's right up there with Bitcoin. Really, I mean, it's not priced that way, but as far as well, it should be. Yeah. There's a lot of people that uh, speculate that Ethereum could outprice Bitcoin uh, before uh, too many years. Yeah. Yeah, it, boy. Just due to its. Uh, 600. You know, its I didn't know it was on this many markets, man. That is amazing. Yeah. It's a big boy. It 600 is. 600 plus markets. That's fascinating. Um, so yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> we're gonna have some fun with Ethereum. That's for sure over the next <clears throat> couple of weeks. We'll see. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll we got to find a way of watching what the we got to keep track of the futures market when that comes out next week. Yeah, we'll, and, have, to, we'll have to. I mean, you'd think share that, would that with be, our share that with our audience. Although you'll know the price. I mean, the the price is the price, right? It's it's so liquid that it's gonna be pretty there's not going to be a ton of arbitrage like the futures aren't going to be at 1500 and and ethereum's at 3000 it is what it is you know yeah and particularly after the reddit and uh um gamestop thing and the recent uh xrp pump and dump um you see coin market cap crash how they still have the wall street bets at the top Yeah, they do, don't they? And, you know, it's kind of a slap in the face. And, you know, Binance owns this, right? And Uh we know where Binance is headquartered. Uh, Where are they headquartered? In China. Binance is? Yeah, Binance is Chinese. Oh. Okay, yeah, because they have the U.S. Binance. Yep, that's why, yeah. So it's kind of, and I had heard rumors that they were actually behind that Wall Street bets, that that was actually the CCP. It's, mm. it's, uh, 
it's a pretty compelling theory. I don't know. But and, and they just leave it up right at the top. Wall Street bets like it's just a slap in the face to the U.S. Wall Street. Yeah. It's kind of, it's like, wow. It is, I mean, you have to keep in mind as we're going through all this, we are at financial war right now. There's no Oh, yeah, there. absolutely. It's the Eastern uh, banking system versus the Western banking system. Yep. And it's been going on for a long time, and it's coming to a head, and it... Uh, and they know. Up. They know what Wall Street's about. They know what's going on. And well, that you know, they, there's a reason it's called Wall. It's it's the block between the uh, banks and uh, the uh, the uh, central banking system and the rest of the uh, uh, economy. Right. Right. Wall Street. It's the wall between them. Yeah. So they're coming at us, and, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we could free, like, a good chunk of their 1.5 billion citizens that they keep under their thumb? Oh. I mean. That, that could be, yeah, that could be amazing. It's a, it's stunning that, that a government is able to do that. I mean, yeah, that but, is a lot of people to give zero freedom to, and they have very little freedom. Yeah. So... Woo, it's getting fun. Hmm. All right. So, what, any other things with the market crash? What do we got going here? Oh, no, not particularly. I just I just feel another big bull run coming on, and, uh, you know, all indications are there. The uh, the charts are, are indicating, you know, there's there's always a possibility of a, a major pullback, but yeah. percentage-wise, we, we, we look at the percentages, and I think we're in the 75%, 80%. Uh, another big bull run here in the next week or two. Yeah, the alts are waking up. I mean, when you have Doge, yeah, it pulled back, which is totally healthy, but it's still at 3.2 cents, you know? Yeah. You got USDCs just under $6 billion. They've, They keep expanding, so it's just under $6 billion. I think that's huge. Tether is $27. Twenty-seven billion, and you know what I noticed too. You know they say, "Oh, tether, it's controlling Bitcoin." I noticed the last time Bitcoin pulled back, tether mm -hmm. was still printing. When it pulled back from forty-two to the the thirties and stuff, tether was still printing. They didn't have a giant halt, mm -hmm. so they keep printing. I don't. There's might be some correlation there, but like we've suspected, they're not running the entire Bitcoin market. I don't believe that that's all tether. I mean, it's a factor, but yeah. I don't know. Well, no, where, is tether, where is tether based out of? Tether is, boy, I want to say it's U.S. Well, let's find out real quick. Tether, Tether, oops. Go. They don't, I've tether. played around with their website and they don't say it, I think. I'm, I'm going to their website. Back right or back by one U.S. dollar held in reserve by Tether Limited. That's what they say, but they won't go through one of the technical audits. But they have, I mean, it's a, that is a quite a story when you look at uh, yeah. the whole Tether situation. But I don't think, do they say about, okay. They don't really say where they are. Contact us. Usually it's right in contact us. And, and it's not. I don't, I think they're trying to be totally decentralized and they're not. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll find that out for the next show. That's on that's on you, Crash. Get that for us. Okay. Yeah, but go ahead. What do you got? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, they want to be decentralized, and they but and they want to be kind of anonymous, I guess. But I don't particularly like that. I'm just not a big fan of any any of the stable coins. It just seems. I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a it's quite a game, but it's it's really how the central banks are controlling everything. It's how well, they're going to keep their currency in place. It it's, is. It's yeah, when really we should use uh, we should use Bitcoin, and everything should just be priced against Bitcoin Bitcoin's price, and and you know let it get to its 
uh, a point where it stabilizes. And, and... Crash, crash, your tree. That implies that Bitcoin is better than fiat. Oh, oh, oh. We cannot it do that. It is. I'm sorry it is. <laughs> How dare you? You didn't finite, hear that here, folks. finite supply. It's, it's, it's liquid. It's divisible by a million. No. <laughs> Crash. All right. So that kind of catches up people on the markets. That's kind of what they're doing. Uh, the total market caps. 1.110 trillion. That's good. We got to work our way up to two trillion. That's really going to put the pressure on things. You know, dude. yeah, and I, I, I could see that happening within a month or two. What? Yeah. You see it happening within a month or two? I see the market doubling in a month or two. <laughs> see, that's what I like about Crash people. He's not afraid to go out on a limb, man. I mean, that's a tight yeah. time frame. You're not going to hear that very often, but you will yeah. right here on Crash and Eddie. Yes. Doc on it. Okay. What up? Bye, we bye, got bye, 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 bye. What's that? Bye, 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 bye. Right, not financial advice, entertainment, and educational purposes only, people. Just buy as as reckless as you can be. Just bye, 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 bye. Right, but as you're doing that, (laughs) hit the like and subscribe and drop a doggone comment, people, please. All right. Um, Let's go to that video you got cooking there, Crash. Specific factors. You know, one interesting thing about the blockchain is that you can actually look at the data. You can see where the money's moving. There have been some reports recently that show there's actually some underlying bullish uh, trends on the network where investors are moving a uh, coin off exchange. Typically, what you see is investors move coin on exchange as a precursor to selling. Um, so I think this is some just some healthy profit taking and some consolidation. I will say that our clients, institutions that work with us, uh, have been steady net buyers throughout this entire period, and we continue to see strong demand among institutions for access to the asset class. Um, so that's that's Tom. really our perspective on what's happened recently. Uh, Tom, so does that mean that the history of 80% declines, which it's done a few times now, uh, is, was that just early period growing pains? Do you think we've entered a period either structurally or because of sentiment or flows where that's just no longer possible? Look, I, I wouldn't rule it out, but I think we're in a very different market now than the one we experienced in 2017. I think the composition of investor interest has changed dramatically. We've moved from uh, in 17 a very retail driven uh, frenzy into the, the final weeks of that year. And now we're seeing much broader base institutional adoption. You're seeing this. Uh, certainly from service providers like us uh, in our business, you're seeing this through open interest on futures exchanges. You're seeing this with uh, BlackRock announcing that a few of their funds will have access to Bitcoin futures. Um, I also think the market's maturing. Uh, there's more liquidity. You know, volatility is down about 50 percent uh, from where it was in 2017. So I, I do believe we believe that the composition of this investor base and what's driving the market higher today is fundamentally different than what we saw three years ago. Shepard Smith here. Thanks. Okay. So that was Tom Jessup, huh? From Fidelity. That was the head of Fidelity. Digital. Digital assets. Yeah. He's a player. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. He, he knows what's going on. And he had a very, that, yeah. very clear uh, um, statement talking about how 2017 is different than the market now here in 2021. Um, you know, mostly it being retail uh, back in 2017, and now it's a, a lot more institution and, and, and corporate money flowing in. And uh, the fact that <clears throat> I was glad to see that you pointed out the fact that uh, there's a lot of Bitcoin being taken off of the exchanges and put into a, a holding pattern. Um, that's that's very very bullish for Bitcoin, um, and I think we're seeing that now. And I think that's going to only increase exponentially over the next month or two. Yeah, I think this is going to take us, you know, this is different. I mean, this is this is a different than the other bull cycles that, that the crypto space has seen. And I think this is going to take us kind of right up to the next halving cycle. 
I mean, that's the thing about Bitcoin, too. You go much further. Oh, here comes the next halving, <laughs> you know. Yeah, every four years, it, uh, the amount of money that the miners receive gets cut in half, which reduces the amount of new Bitcoin being minted and accessible to the market, yeah. which, drive, which drives demand higher. Yeah. And I think it's, gosh, I want to say it's, nine per hour right now nine bitcoin per hour i want to say i'm not sure on that but that what the amount that is produced halves as well <clears throat> so that's why they call it the having everything halves miners get paid half and the amount of bitcoin that gets spit out halves and this is all until you get to 21 million bitcoin and i think they're in the 18 millions right now so mm -hmm. most of it's been produced yeah i think that's targeted for 2041 is that correct when it's all yeah something like that something Boy, can like you imagine that. what's going to happen to bitcoin in 2041 when there's no more produced oh wow. my God. it's i can't even imagine i don't i i, I, I can't even fathom what the price is going to be at that point well, and then you just look at all the cryptos. They're just that's why it is a different asset class cuz they're all similar to that. I mean, some of them have some inflation built in like Ethereum. Some of them are pre-mined completely like XRP. Mm -hmm. You know, you got all the DeFi stuff, but none of them are printing machines really. If they are, they're just not going to be popular or used or have value, right? Mhm. Mm so, anywho, Crash, what else you want to talk about today for the audience? <clears throat> um, let's see. We'll keep an eye on the on the CME and Ethereum. That's kind of the biggest thing in the market right now. Ethereum's really got the spotlight in the market right now. That's kind of yeah clear. Yeah, and uh, you know, so. Well, I just want to talk real quickly about uh, Crypto.com. Um, it's a platform that I'm a big fan of and have been using for over two and a half years, going on three years. And uh, I've been doing a little bit of research on different uh, credit cards or debit cards or prepaid cards, uh, Visa or MasterCards, where we can actually spend our cryptocurrencies on a daily basis. And I, I just have not found anything that compares to uh, the Crypto.com platform and their their um, their Visa uh, prepaid card. So if anybody's interested in doing that and setting up a alternative banking uh, system, uh, let us know in the comments and we can uh, turn you on to some people that can walk you right through it and get you going quickly. Yep. And yeah, we got a link attached to all our videos for crypto.com hit that um and what is it they get 25 and the link gets 20 how does that work yeah it's a referral code uh, so you know if you use the referral code you get 25 dollars in, in cro coin which is uh i, I think could be very beneficial as well so good and, stuff uh, good stuff um yeah we're gonna talk coming up about weatherby crypto too he's a, a friend of ours that we want to get into and talk just about because i think he can be helpful too to some of our users so we'll t cool. let's talk about that maybe next show a little bit sounds good sounds good um that's good stuff yeah i we got to look at some different card reviews too because i did a i looked at a couple and i will say that crypto.com uh comes up pretty high it's it's actually always number one is from what i've seen so mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting but uh so yeah that's a it's a good one um yeah i like the the fact that um you know just using cryptocurrency on a daily basis and everything i do and all my transactions and everything it's it's so cool and it's it, there's so many benefits to it and it's it's freeing um and what's the cash back that you get with that? Is uh, it two percent? It depends on how much you stake. Oh, uh, and so that that depends, and that's based yeah. how much you stake determines which card you get, right? Because there's like correct. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the more the more CRO tokens you, you stake, the the higher percent back you get. Um, I I started with um, getting two percent back. Um, now I, I bumped up my staking amount. Now I get three percent back on every purchase. And, now, when uh, you bump up your staking, do you get a different card? Do they physically send you a different card? You can either you can choose to keep the one you have, but you're still getting the benefits, or you can order a new one. But um, do they charge if you get a new one? N- no, not if you're upping your staking. Okay. Yeah. You know, CRO two. It's not the most expensive token out there, people. I know. I. I... <sighs> It's kind of beat up, really. It's been real beat up. You know what it is, is that, you know, when when it, when it you look at that chart, if you scroll down a little bit, and the price went way up, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, six, eight, ten months ago, um, back in September is when, yeah. It was, price it was, is the green line, people. Market yeah. cap blue. Price per Bitcoin is yellow. Yeah, so, you know, so they were running promotions. They, they uh, um they had a huge push on on number of users that last in 2020 they went from 1 million users to 5 million users and i think they're well over 6 or 7 now but uh, they did this big push and they had uh, their the staking for their crow coin was it was like over 10% i think and uh, so there was a lot of money sitting and and being dumped into crow but then when they um, pulled back on that staking percentage um, the price went way down, which they kind of needed it to stabilize probably, but they have a whole bunch of new programs coming out. They're going to put more demand on that coin. Um, so it's, it's one I, I, you know, I have, I had it staked already, so I'm not going to put any more in it right now, but if I see things really taking off, I may, I may add some more. Yeah. The volume's interesting too. It's totally picked up since May. It's a, you know, don't forget, in crypto, it's all about use case. I think we have a clear use case with this token. I don't care what the price is. It's, mm-hmm. you know, you're either thinking it's fraudulent and it's going to go away, or you're identifying this does have a use case. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you can. I've heard, heard complaints. Oh, they there's too many tokens. All this stuff. It's they need them. You need that when you're supporting that many users and a true use case. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's a good one. Okay. All right. Well, let's wrap it up, Crash, unless you got something else urgent. Nope, not at the moment. All right, people, stay strong. Get off the sidelines. Don't ever give up. And uh, yep. hit the like and subscribe by all means. Yeah, enjoy the day and live in the present. See ya. All right, Crash. What the heck, man? That was kind of a late start today, dude. And yesterday's debacle, really? You you turned my mic off is what you did. I don't know how you did it. You <clears throat> turned my mic off. I think it was karma because you took so darn long getting everything set up and wasted half <laughs> my morning. So wh- what do you know? We have a show that ba- – and you've wanted the limelight. You want that. So now you have it. you got to show it's just you. Are you happy now? Did you post that? Yeah, I posted it. You made me. I didn't see it. It's posted. It's posted. I don't believe you. How many? What, there's probably like two two listens. <laughs> I'll tell you what. They're gonna mo- be the most entertained listens. Oh yeah. <laughs> I bet this is gonna wreck my reputation. <laughs> two hours it. ago, no views. Good lord. You love to go solo, dude. <laughs> Uh, that's going to go down as history is one of my most embarrassing moments. Thank you. <laughs>